All right, Swago community, this is Solo Straight, the Crazy Karelian, and I'm coming back with another episode of Never Tell Me the Odds. And what we're going to be talking about today is the initial free-to-play start-up from start to finish, beginning of the game, farming guide. Now, this farming guide is not going to be an overall metric for how to succeed with certain things like, you know, Grand Arena Championship or things like that. I'm going to give you my personal farming guide that I have done within the last few years in order to take my alternative account to get a GL right out the gate. Now, I know this is against all kinds of theories. People will tell you, do not rush a GL. I'm not condoning that you rush a GL. I'm just offering out there my experience. If you go that route, if you decide that that's what you want to do, beginning of the game, let's go ahead and rush a GL. We're going to talk about which GL do we need to rush and how we successfully do it. And in my experience, what I was able to do is take a starter account within 10 months, able to unlock a GL. So what we're going to do is cover my journey, explain some steps, some very important criteria, things you need to know when you're starting out in this game, where to go, where to look for these resources, how to collect these resources in what order, what's important to farm, how to farm, and what it's going to lead to long term. We're going to tell you what to not waste your time on for resources and what's down the road that's going to happen through the natural course of the game. So let's dive in and show you how to rush a GL from start to finish. All right, so let's go ahead and address that age-old question. Which GL do I rush first? Which one is the one I want to go for? Now, there are six total in-game currently. There are some that are very expensive and are going to be very high-end game GLs. You're not going to be able to get those right out the gate. There's just no way. Not a free-to-play from day one. It's not going to happen. So you have to focus on some of the original GLs or some of the secondary ones that got released. And what we're going to actually be addressing today in that argument is the overall conception that everyone needs to go for Galactic Legend, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren first. I am not going to debunk that in any way. And whenever I went for my first GL, my alternative account, it was a very heavy decision I had to make. But there was one key factor that deterred me from going for Kylo first. And ultimately, I decided the easiest free-to-play farm from start to finish, beginning of the game based on resources, is going to be Sith Eternal Emperor. Now, I know a lot of people are going to stop right there and say, whoa, wait a minute, everyone says Kylo's the best. Kylo makes his own team. You farm the First Order, so once you get him, you have a team. And that is in no way any kind of negative statement. That is completely 100% true. However, if we look at Sith Eternal Emperor, the one pinch point that you can't get around, the one thing that's going to make that farm totally harder to do for Kylo that Sith Eternal does not have comes down to for Kylo Ren you need the capital ship first order finalizer and why that's important to know is if you're going for Kylo Ren first you have to not only farm his resources you not only have to farm his requirements in a specific order you are building his team however you're going to have to side farm and work into your metrics how to get fleets. And I say that because in order to get the finalizer, you're going to need to get the first order ships, the first order fleet, and get that ship up to its appropriate star level. So this was the one factor over all the factors when I weighed them out, the options when I started my decision to go for Sith Eternal first, was to look at that pinch point and say there's no way I can do that without adding a lot of time and a lot more resources to my metric. So I decided on Sith Eternal based solely on the finalizer. And I say that because Sith Eternal ship, the Imperial TIE bomber that is required, is farmable from the nodes once you unlock and get to fleets nodes anyway. So that ship is going to be something you can farm, you can put as much as you want into refreshing that node, going for that node, and that one ship is the only ship you're going to need. Now, you'll get other ships through the osmosis of this game, but that one ship is the one that you need for his requirements, not an actual capital ship, which is going to be harder to get when you're talking about the finalizer. 
So that was my deciding factor. So it's good to go ahead and get that out of the way when you want to make this argument. If you want to go for Kylo, I am not trying to disparage that in any way. There are 100,000 farming guides out there on how to rush GL, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, and he's ultimate GL to have. Very, very, very metrics of this game. Variously, probably top three GL behind the two paywalls like Jedi Master Kenobi and Lord Vader. So I'm not knocking in any way anybody who wants to go for Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. What I'm telling you is an easier, cheaper farming strategy based on free-to-play is going to be Sith Eternal Emperor. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about when you're rushing a GL is there's going to be your requirements. Those are going to be your known things. They're going to be in the game that from the start to finish, there's a list. You can go in, you can look at them. You're going to have 13 to 16 requirements based on what GL you're going for. So we all know what those are. However, there's one underlining thing that nobody wants to tell you when you start this adventure. And that's going to be subsidiary characters you're going to need in order to get a GL. Now, those characters might be required to unlock a requirement for your requirements. And so ultimately, they become part of your farming metric. So with Sith Eternal Emperor, it's easy to look at his list of requirements and say, wait a minute. Some of these are gated by other requirements. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the initial start to finish guide begins with the Phoenix Squad Rebels members. And what I mean by that is this. There is two requirements for Sith Eternal Emperor very early on, very good legendary characters you can get using one squad. And that squad is the Phoenix Squad. Now the reason we're going to focus on the Phoenix Squad is because they are the only way to get Grand Admiral Thrawn. And Grand Admiral Thrawn, a requirement for Sith Eternal Emperor, is a very good plug-and-play character. He's utilized in a lot of ways, long-term, in-game. So he's going to be a character you want to get. And even if you go for other Rebels, a lot of people will tell you, we'll go for you know CLS, let's go for Han and Chewie and, and R2 and all those other Rebels. And those are great characters and they're what you want to be focusing on early in game if you're not rushing a GL. But if you're rushing a GL from start to finish, you're going to want the Phoenix because they count as Rebels. And because they count as Rebels, you also not only have to have them to get Thrawn, no way around it, but they double up and they count on a way to get Emperor Palpatine because they are Rebels. So you can actually do both without having to have a secondary set of Rebels, without having to have... 10 extra characters on top of your requirements. So overall, Sith Eternal Emperor's requirements are going to have five extra with the Phoenix members, but they're also going to be used later on because they're going to be able to get you some fleet ships built up with their ships and the fact that they crew them. So later on, as you're working on metrics after you brush your GL and as you're unlocking fleets and fleet arenas, you're going to have some starter ships and they're the pilots for them. So it's actually triple fold. You need the Phoenix Squad first to get Thrawn. They also in turn will get you Palpatine. And sidebar, you're working on the pilots for a couple of ships that make up a pretty decent starter fleet. Now they're not going to take down the Executor without a lot of help later on and a lot of resources on that Rebel fleet. But they are going to be key components for two ships of that Rebel fleet that is still used and especially when you get to the end game, when you get up in status GP and you're doing your grand arenas and you get into that Kyber class where you got to have a bunch of fleets, you're going to need the Rebel Fleet anyway. So these are going to go ahead and get you some starter ships out of the way. And like we talked about earlier with the Imperial TIE Bomber, you got to farm that one ship. So you're going to have a collection of ships. They're not going to have great synergy early on, hodgepodgeness, but you are going to have some ships. So don't be worried about, I don't have any ships, i got to stop farming my GL in order to work on my fleet meta a little bit. It's not going to be a necessary thing. You're going to find that you're going to actually be unlocking some ships as you go on, and these pilots are going to already be there. A lot of these requirements for Sith Eternal Emperor are actually pilots themselves. So let's go ahead and start with the Phoenix Squad. And number one member you want to go for is Hera Syndulla. The reason you want to start with Harrison Dula, she's a cantina farm. 
Cantina Farm requires no refreshing. So as you're starting out, you'll notice early in game, you're able to level up very rapidly. As you do the tutorial metrics, you're constantly leveling up. So day one, you're gonna go from level one to like level 40. If you just sit there for a few hours, but you're gonna constantly refresh, constantly level up, and you're gonna keep throwing that Cantina energy on Hera Syndulla's node. And the reason you wanna do that is you wanna go ahead and get her out of the way. You wanna get her up to seven stars. Now, Cantina is gonna actually be responsible for four of these requirements for Sith Eternal Emperor. So you wanna go ahead and start on Hera because she's gonna be the first node you come to and you get her out of your way. Now, in addition to that, the next character is we're gonna focus again, Cantina is gonna be Ezra Bridger. And the reason we're going for Ezra Bridger is because Ezra is another Phoenix Squad member who's needed for Thrawn, okay? So the collective five Phoenix members you're gonna go for in order is gonna be Hera, and then Ezra Bridger. Now Ezra Bridger is gonna be also utilized later on in game, in game results. He's a Jedi, he's got some great abilities. He's got a good buff D spell on the enemy. He's got a double tap attack. He's got the call to assist. He's all around great plug and play Jedi later on in game. He's great for territory battles. If you're struggling with that later on in game, we'll get in that other future videos, but after Ezra and Hera, you're going to go ahead and focus on your Kanan Jarrus, your Chopper, and your Zeb. And I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to touch Sabine Wren. Not even going to go there. And the reason we're not going to go after Sabine at all in this Phoenix tool is because Sabine requires actual energy node farming. And the reason you don't want Sabine is because you're gonna to have to take that energy node farming to go for five other additional characters in this farming guide for Sith Eternal Emperor. So Sabine is gonna be a waste of your resources and a waste of your time. Now the reason that she's obsolete and the other members of the Phoenix Squad are the ones you wanna go for is because of pinch point analysis. And what that means is if you're in Cantina and you're farming Hera and Ezra and eventually Sith Marauder, and maybe even Count Dooku at the end, right? You don't want to go in the cantina for any other reason. So the characters that you need to focus on in Phoenix Squad are the ones that you get from non-cantina and non-light or dark side energy farming nodes. So that means you need to look at your stores. And the first one you're going to get outside of Hera and Ezra is going to be Chopper. And the reason you're going to get Chopper third in the list a, he's a Phoenix character, so you've got to have him for Thrawn. But B, as you're farming the Cantina node, you're going to be getting the Cantina tokens. And the Cantina tokens go into the Cantina store to be utilized, and that's where Chopper is. So you're going to be saving those, not using them on anything else other than going straight for Chopper. So you want to be logging in, you want to be getting your store refreshes, you want to always be getting the Chopper shards out of that store. And what that's going to allow you to do is also ultimately be looking at the last two, Kanan and Zeb. They are also in stores, but they're in different stores. So in your squad arena tokens that you're gonna be getting by doing your squad battles in arena mode is gonna be for Kanan Jarrus. And the reason you wanna do that instead of trying to farm any other nodes is because you're gonna collectively be getting those daily anyway. You're gonna be getting them through login as well as arena battles. Now arena is not as important as it used to be after moving metrics and rewards to the grand arena metric. However, it's still something you wanna complete daily. You wanna do your few battles and get your tokens up to about the 600 daily. And you wanna use those for Kane and Jairus. Now, sidebar, after you're done with Kanan's Janus from that store, there are two other characters for Sith Eternal Emperor in that store that take the same currency. So you want to keep doing that. And once you get Kanan Jarrus, you're going to be able to move on to someone else you need for Sith Eternal. But for right now, we're talking about the Phoenix requirements. And that takes me to the last member of the Phoenix squad. The fifth member you're going to need in order to complete your five for Thrawn and Palpatine is going to be Zeb Aurelius. Zeb Aurelius is in the Galactic War store. Now, you're going to get to the Galactic War March table around level 40 whenever you're doing this. So, again, this is very early metrics beginning in-game. But if you start 
first couple of days and you just stay on it again you're gonna be leveling up in no time so when you get to the galactic war and you get that currency you're gonna notice a whole bunch of stuff in there too don't be deterred okay your goal is that currency is going to go for Zeb Aurelios only and by that time by the time you get the galactic war table unlocked you should have Hera pretty decent star count close to seven you should be working on your Ezra which is going to in turn lead to you getting chopper and then you're going to be doing your daily arena matches and you're going to be getting Kanan and now you've got Zeb and what that's going to do is round about in about three months you should have the Phoenix Squad done and geared to a level that you could take on Thrawn now when I say to a level you could take on Thrawn I know myself personally I was able to take characters from gear seven and eight up to gear 10 depending on who they were no Zeta is required in order to unlock Thrawn at seven stars and once you get Thrawn unlocked at seven stars you don't have to worry about the Phoenix Squad anymore. They're only a requirement for him. At that point, we truly begin our farm for Sith Eternal because we're going to start with Thrawn and Palpatine once we get those two using the Phoenix Squad and out of our way. All right, so again, the continuing theory that pinch point analysis is what you're going to want to be doing. So for your Cantina store, once you finish with Hera, once you finish with Ezra, you're going to be focusing on Sith Marauder. Okay, Sith Marauder from your Cantina store. So that's going to be the next thing you do only in that Cantina store energy. After you get Kanan Jar uh, Jarrus done through your Squad Arena store, you're going to then be using the same metrics to get Darth Sidious. Okay, Darth Sidious, another requirement of Sith Eternal Emperor. After Darth Sidious is done using those metrics you used to get Kanan and now Darth Sidious, you're going to then turn your focus to getting Tarkin out of that same store. So you're ultimately going to have your Palpatine, your Thrawn, your Sidious, and your Tarkin coming from metrics that don't even require farming nodes. So if you're doing metrics that are allowing you to farm these characters out of stores and out of other metrics that have nothing to do with farming energy nodes, you might be saying, well, what do I do with the energy nodes? Okay, so collectively, you're going to be in the background farming these nodes once they appear because there's going to be some characters and including the actual bomber itself that require these energies. So what you want to do is while you're working on your Phoenix squad from the cantina and using those tokens to get Chopper and to get Zeb and to get Kanan and then you've unlocked Palpatine, you've unlocked Thrawn. While you're doing all that in the background, you're using your energy to knock out nodes, light and dark side, until you get to specific ones. And the ones you want to get to are going to be General Knight Anakin, Admiral Piet, General Veers, and then, of course, Imperial TIE Bomber. Okay, So those four, you're going to have to use energy on. Right? That's why we said earlier, we do not want to focus on Sabine Wren. Because if we're focusing on her just to get a fifth member of Phoenix to unlock Thrawn and then Palpatine, we've wasted time, we've wasted resources, so don't go that route. What you want to do, though, is you want to be getting Piet, Anakin, Veers, and the Bomber with your energy nodes as quickly as you can. Now, I, I would suggest that you start with General Veers. And the reason you want to start with General Veers is because General Veers is going to be very essential later on. And in game, a lot of people still use the Imperial Troopers. Veers, Stark, Piet. They later on get Moff Gideon and Dark Trooper and fill out a team that can take down a lot of various things, right, in certain metrics. So you want to go ahead and get your Veers done so that you can be starting on a side team, the Imperial Troopers. And after you get Veers, you're going to want to go for Piet. Because again, he's going to go hand in hand with them. All of these characters are going to be on accelerated drop nodes now because they've been out a while. You're now coming into the game to where you have that luxury. And so when you work on getting Piet and Beers, you also are going to have Tarkin. You're also going to have Stark. You're going to be building a hodgepodge little Imperial Trooper team as well as an Empire team. So this collectively is going to be helping you in certain metrics. When you talk about, well, I rushed to GL, I don't have any teams. 
you're going to be building teams just based on the requirements themselves. Whereas, again, the initial argument, if you're going for Kylo first, you're getting the first order, and that's about all you're getting. So in this metric, you're getting three or four viable teams out of it. All right, so talking about the troopers, you heard me mention Colonel Stark. And the reason we didn't list him when we're talking about farming nodes is Colonel Stark is going to be available through your guild store. Okay, so well, as we're farming, as we're leveling up, start to finish, we're getting those daily level ups and those boosts. And again, it's going to be a little grindy, right, in order to level up high enough. But once you get into a guild, you're going to be doing some metrics, you're going to be doing some things, you're going to be getting tokens for your guilds. And that's going to allow you to use the guild store. And in the guild store, you're going to focus on Stark. You're going to focus on Stark because, again, he's going to go with who you're already farming from your energy nodes in Piet and Veers. And you're going to also have Tarkin through osmosis of having to do fleets and unlocking that through the tutorials. You're going to be having his capital ship. You're going to be getting the TIE Bomber. So you're kind of collectively building a couple of various things that are going to help you out early in game as you're rushing Sith Eternal Emperor. When you're in that guild store and you're going for Colonel Stark, after Colonel Stark, there's another character that's going to be needed for Sith Eternal Emperor, and that's going to be Darth Maul. So again, we're taking the same metrics, the same pinch point analysis we had earlier, and we're just moving the buckets. And what I mean by that is, for instance, Cantina, once Hera's done, you get Ezra. Once Ezra's done, you get Sith Marauder. Once Sith Marauder's done, you get Count Dooku, right? And so collectively, that bucket, Cantina energy bucket, has characters taken care of. So you want to be looking at your buckets, right? So you've got your guild store, which is going to have Maul, which is going to have Stark. You've got the Galactic War store, it's Zeb only. You've got the um, currency for Charper coming from the Cantina Battle store, right? And you already have these characters you have to farm, but there's some I haven't mentioned, right? We have a few characters we haven't talked about, and everyone's probably saying, you haven't mentioned Royal Guard, and you haven't mentioned Darth Vader. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, while you're doing these metrics, start to finish your tutorials, you're going to realize every time you level up, every time you do something new in game, they're going to force you to do this anyway. A tutorial is basically saying do this, then do that. The free roaming play doesn't happen until you get around level 50, level 60 on your quest to level 85. So if you've got to be doing it anyway, if the tutorial is making you do it, you're going to notice you're getting nodes for Darth Vader, okay? So Darth Vader is gonna happen over the course of this grand farm, just like you can be farming Stark or Anakin or Piet or the Bomber over the course of this grand farm in the background of using these pinch point stores and cantina nodes, right? You're gonna also be getting Darth Vader unlocked, okay? And Darth Vader is probably hands down one of the best characters you can get early in games. Very viable, even in end game, right? I know the great nerf happened, and they took away some of his viability, but I'm telling you, he still has great usage overall in game and on your way there. He's going to be able to single-handedly win you some Grand Arena tournaments early on in game once you qualify for that metric. So, it's a character you definitely want to be getting, but through osmosis, you're going to get him overall anyway. So, don't focus and worry about, I don't have Vader yet. He's going to come as you're working on the Phoenix and then as you're farming these stores and pinch points and farming these nodes. The other character is Royal Guard, okay? Now, I'm going to suggest you can farm Royal Guard, but I would not. And the reason I say that is you're going to realize the more you play this game, okay, there is randomness, right, to the refreshes and the stores and the things like that. But I'm telling you, even though there's randomness, I have found that in the pulling of Bronzium Packs, the Bronzium Pack pulling store, right, through your ally points that you're going to get through everything in the game, ally points are going to total up fast, you're going to get Royal Guard shards, okay? Matter of fact, I joke with some of my guild mates, it's the Royal Guard store. That's what we call it, okay? So it's like, I'm going to Royal Guard store and I'm going to drop some Bronzium points, ally points, whatever you want to call them. So don't waste time farming Royal Guard. I guarantee by the end of these steps, these overall collectively nine steps to get Sith Eternal Empire, you're going to realize that once you get Sith Eternal Palpatine, you're going to have Royal Guard and Darth Vader farmed 
are very close to finishing it up. So then it's just tying up little loose ends, right? Then you can get on that gear crunch. Now, we talk about the gear crunch. The biggest thing you want to remember, right? You're going to be saying to yourself, solo, I've used the Cantina Energy. I've got Hera. I've got Ezra. I got Sith Marauder. And I even powered through and got Dooku. They're all seven stars, right? What do I do with Cantina Energy now? That's where the fifth part of Cantina Energy farming is going to come into play. And that's going to be you're going to be working on your relic mat farming right you might not even have a character geared yet to that point once you get those four characters done that even requires relic mats but you're going to want to go ahead and power through the cantina nodes to get to the relic mat nodes because you're going to want to be farming those with that energy only and again that's the uniqueness of having buckets of farming pinch points you got to do something daily in cantina anyway for your daily login requirements so Use it for your relic farming. Just lift that pile up because you're going to need a whole bunch of relic levels when you get the Sith Eternal Emperor, okay? His requirements and then him himself, when you get him done, you're going to take him up to relic 7, 8, and potentially 9 once you get in certain metrics. So, the Cantina Store is your friend. A lot of people don't like Cantina Farms. Personally, for me, it's my favorite farming metric because there's no daily refresh limit. And anybody who's doing any kind of a character farm, I don't care if you're rushing a GL, working on another character for some teams, or just gear in general, I cannot stand light and dark side node farming because they limit you. If it's a hard node, you only get the five pores, and then you got to use your crystals to refresh that as well as use your crystals for other metrics. So it's kind of a backdoor gimmicky, and if you're free to play like me, you need those resources. And that brings me to my last point of this when you're talking about these characters. You're going to see as you go through these metrics, right? You're going to see these things pop up. And you're going to notice in your regular old shipments, weekly shipments, crystals, characters are going to show up in there for 320 crystals, right? 680 crystals. You're going to be like, why don't I just go ahead and rush and get these 12 shards right now? I'm telling you, don't do it. Stay on the system. The system's going to be tedious. It's not meant for you to get it in a couple of weeks. It took me 10 months doing it. Just ideal focusing on these metrics. But what it does is it allows you to save your crystals. Don't use them to refresh stores, right? And don't use them to buy character shards from stores. When you get to these characters that you're really close on, you're trying to power through, you can do a refresh or two. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't want to get up in the 200s and 250s and 400s when it comes to refreshing because it's just not going to be worth it. Not for five shards, potentially 10 max if you get five out of five pulls, which is just not going to happen. So you want to be saving those crystals because you're going to be needing them. And you're going to be needing them in this journey because once you get to certain levels with these characters and their relic requirements and their gear requirements, things like the stun guns and the chirotech, you can drop your crystals there accordingly, a little bit. Don't go crazy. You want to always have your stockpile built up. But that's why you don't want to be using those metrics. So again, this is a 100% free to play farming guide. This is not hyperdrive bundle. I'm not negating the value of a hyperdrive bundle. If you're just starting out and you want to throw some money at the game, the hyperdrive bundle is a great value, okay? I can't argue with the number of characters you get to five star, the ships, the instant access to 85, etc. I don't do that. 100% farming, free to play, right? So that's my niche. That's what I'm going for. It's very strategic. It's very rough. I'm not saying you can't drop some money occasionally. That is your choice. Nobody is saying there's anything wrong with that. I just personally don't do it, okay? So I like to be free to play. I actually semi like to grind, right? I, I get a game. I don't want to be done with it in two days. So that's what this game offers me. And if you're looking at it, you're just starting, you think it's a very grand, daunting task, and you're like, oh my God, I'm never going to get anywhere. It is very possible. It's very doable. And my alt account, again, able to power it through in about 10 months. Now, that is also hinging on one little key fact we talked about earlier. Once you get to the ability to unlock a guild, you're going to need to get in a guild that is doing some things to help you out, right? And I mean that because those pinch point bucket store currencies, the only way you're going to be getting those currencies and getting them to a level you need at to make this work in that time frame of 10 months is you're going to be getting a guild that can do some Sith raids, can do some Kenobi raids, 
and some Han Solo raids. So that's going to be your focus as you're unlocking these. You're going to be wanting to get that word community out there. You're going to find a nice guild that can get those raids done. Because those raids are going to be the currency metric that's going to allow you to build up some stuff that you're not even going to know at the time. You're like, what is this item? I don't even see where I need it. Trust me, you need it, okay? You're going to need it for that gear 12 to 13 crunch. You're going to need those tokens for these pinch points we already talked about. Also, collectively, you're going to be getting three great characters there, and that's in Han Solo, Treya, and Journal Kenobi. Very, very in-game staple characters still to this day. So that's going to be your focus as you're getting around level 60, 65, is, hey, i got to find a guild that can get one, two, if not all three of these raids where I can compete in them and do it. Now, you're going to be saying to yourself, I ain't got characters to score highly. They've kind of fixed those metrics. You don't have to be number one overall. You just got to have seven-star characters. And again, you got to have seven-star characters anyway for Thrawn and Papatine, right? Or anybody in the Sith Eternal lineup that you're farming. So don't think about it as, I can't take first place. I can't take fifth place. It doesn't matter. You get in a guild that's going to let you do some raids. You've got characters to qualify. In loud days, a lot of guilds actually have them simmed, so it's a five-minute thing. Once it launches, it's done, you get your rewards in an hour. So, it's nothing to really stress and worry about yet. That's more of your gear crunch later on as you're getting to, hey, my characters are getting around gear level 11, gear level 12, I'm getting up in the 13s here, and i got to start my relic farming through cantina nodes. So, that's going to be sidebar end project that you're going to want to be working on. So again, to recap, when you go on for a GL, right, you can go for Kylo. Kylo is great. He's awesome in various metrics of this game. However, if you're looking for the cheapest, fastest, easiest character to get GL-wise from start to finish, it's going to be Sith Eternal Emperor. And it's all based on that finalizer pinch point. Be the greatest GL, but I'm here to tell you there's a lot of flexibility with Sith Eternal Emperor. So... He's a good GL to go for, start to finish. He's going to be one of your cheaper ones to get, aside from the relics. I'm going to go ahead and call that out. He's very expensive relic-wise. However, once you're at the point where you're only worrying about relic levels, you're going to see, through the natural progression of this farm, you have several teams. You're going to have a Phoenix team up and ready to go. Not really great in-game. You can throw an Omicron on here and do a few things, maybe. But they're going to give you a pretty decent starter fleet, right? You're going to have the Imperial Trooper lineup. You're going to have three of the main ones knocked out, and that's Piet, Beers, and Stark. From there, you can go anywhere. You can go ahead and throw Tarkin in temporarily if you need to as a fill-in plug-and-play. You're going to have Thrawn there based on certain matchups. You can drop him in for your fifth or other Empire members that you're going to be having. In addition to that, the Empire themselves, right? So you're going to have Emperor Palpatine. You're going to have Darth Vader. You're going to have the Royal Guard from the Royal Guard store. You're going to have Director Krennic. And you're going to have Tarkin. So, that's another team. you got the Phoenix. you got the Imperial Troopers. you got an Empire team. You're going to have some Sith. Because through Gal Dooku and Darth Sidious, you're going to have a few building, budding Siths when you put Sith Marauder in there. Now, again, they're not ideally a finished team. But early in game, it's a couple of Sith with some high relics. You're going to have to have them anyway that you can actually use. Throw them in with Sith Eternal once you get them unlocked, right? Saves you a team right there. It's not building the First Order fleet or building the First Order characters for Kylo, but they will work with him, right? Especially with Darth Maul. So you're going to find that you've got, oh my goodness, five or six teams just by doing this one rush GL metric. And then again, just a couple of things, and we'll follow up videos of what you do once you rush to GL. Where do I go, Solo? So we'll follow up on that, things to get, because there's going to be a lot of people telling you, you're crazy, what are you doing, why are you doing this? But if it's something you want to do, you just really want to challenge, you want to go early game up to that point, once you get to your GAC levels and things, you're going to see that low early GAC, you're going to be successful by having a GL because nobody else is going to have it. So, if that's something you're interested in, you're new to the game, you don't want to drop money, but you want to be able to successfully enjoy what you're doing, go ahead, use this farming metric. I'm solo straight. Never tell me the odds.